good afternoon everybody. It's another day here in the desert. It's a really hot day, really bright. The sun's intense. I'm headed back from retrieving some water. I'm uh, going to make kind of an easier solution for watering our animals. So we basically have the two water totes, you know, by the main cabin where we do laundry and everything like that. Well, what we've decided is that we're going to take some of the old school rain barrels, which we used to haul water when we first got here, and we're going to stick a rain barrel by the rabbits and a rain barrel by the chickens and fill it with water and put a lid on it, put a cup there or whatever. So then we can tap the rain barrels instead of having to haul five gallons of water, you know, back and forth. It's kind of annoying also bad on our backs. We don't have a yoke or anything like that, so it's kind of intense hauling, you know, 35 gallons of water, eighth of a mile. But we'll be back soon, and we're going to see how it goes. Also, I got an update coming to end of video on our solar situation. Uh, it's been a nightmare, but I think we got under control, so that's great news coming up. Well, we made it back. I got this orange hose hooked up here to the tote. Luckily, the top of the water is higher than this rain barrel here. And back at the little rabbit hutch, got the water transferring. It's slow going, but it's going. Rabbits are doing great. Bianca's been doing a good job taking care of them. Sad news update on the baby bunnies. We only have one left. We've lost two to stress of existence, but one remains. All right, sweet. So this rain barrel is nice and full all the way up to the top here. I'm going to pull this hose out. And now for the second part of it is for the chicken's water source, right? I mean... I've been pulling water for the chickens from this area and walking about 400 feet or something like that over there for too long. I have the second barrel here. It's going to be filled in the same manner. So I'm about to pull the hose up, roll the barrel and the tote over to the chickens, and do the same thing. All right, so I got the barrel loaded up, got the tote good to go. Now let's just see about... I have a feeling I'm going to leave this barrel behind, but maybe I can crawl it. There we are. I think I'll put it right where that cedar thingy-majigger is, so it's right outside. Come on, Ariel, let's go, girl. Oh, I'm gonna turn this thing off. Okay, so, water's gonna go here. Apparently I still have some plant food and stuff in this thing. Never used. Ah, Hello, chicks. Okay. Right here should be, I hope, good enough. Just kidding. All right, that'll be flat enough, I hope. Grabbing the pickle barrel. From Greece, apparently. <laughs>
now it's as easy as really just undoing the hose. Couple few. I like to get all the air out of the line, especially when you're going on another incline. So turn it on. There we go. All right, so now instead of a few hundred feet of a trip, you have to make about a five foot trip to the water. It'll be much better for them eventually. I'd like to get some sort of container that I can auto float, auto fill, so they will never be low in water, never be stressed out from owner negligence. <laughs> All right, awesome. You know, small things like this really make a huge difference. They really do. All right, water solved for now. I'm gonna sit here, wait for it to transfer. Now let's talk about solar for a minute. Solar power. My hope for the future and also the seemingly bane of my existence. We have 10 100 watt panels which equals a thousand potential watts of energy that these panels can convert from solar power into direct energy that I can use for my batteries. In an ideal situation, a thousand watts of power are generated here and pushed down through this breaker in the conduit, coming up into the powerhouse to a charge controller. This charge controller is responsible for taking that power, detecting what voltage the battery array is at, and forwarding as much of the thousand potential watts of energy as possible. We have found this charge controller at our current 12 volt wiring system is limiting it to under 750 watts. That means two and a half of my panels out there doing nothing. We found this out because mysteriously we've been having to run the generator again for the past month or so. A couple people mentioned in videos, do I hear the generator running? What's going on? Yeah, you did. The reason being our battery power wasn't lasting as long. Instead of having a thousand watts of charging power, we only had sometimes 500, you know, because they rarely run at 100% efficiency in the day. So we were kind of stumped on it. It turns out that because this charge controller only lets under 800 watts through, that by changing to 12 volts, we screwed ourselves. You know, I was like, why, why, how come? On a 24 volt system, we're good, and then we switch to 12, and then bam, we're screwed, you know? It took me going through all the manuals of all the equipment and looking at a page that uh, said 12 volts, 700 something watts, 24 volts, 1400 watts, etc., etc. So, this charge controller can handle multiple voltages 12, 24, 36, 48, whatever. It's a 60 amp charge controller. And because watts is volts times amps, I had a huge cap when we converted to 12. Nearly half, actually. Now that we've got that all figured out, we're going to go back and test our battery bank. A second huge part of the issue we're having is that our batteries no longer last how long they should. <clears throat> when we first were getting the solar power started, we had all of our batteries purchased and nothing hooked up yet. We hooked up the batteries just to the house in an inverter to see how long they would last, right? We lasted over 30 hours just on these 10 batteries. With the fridge on inside, the TV going, the fans on, lights, everything. Two nights ago, we were running the generator after the sun went down. Generator died. I took note of the time. Said, alright, let's see how long the batteries last. 
45 minutes later, our light shut off. 45 minutes. That is one under 1 30th of their previous efficiency. Something is drastically wrong within this battery bank. And what we're going to do to solve it is disconnect all the cabling and try to identify what battery is dead within this array. So once we strip all the cabling away, we're going to number them and take the numbers down for all the voltages individually as we test them. Then, I'm going to get my battery tester, which has a load tester on it, hook it up to each battery, and do a load test on it. I'm then going to record the data for each one. I'm then going to take my nice wheel battery charger, turn on the generator, and run each of these batteries for two hours apiece. It should take me about a day if I'm really on top of the scheduling. After that, I'll be able to tell which individual battery has a really low number in comparison to the rest, and it will give me a pretty good idea of exactly where within this bank or this array the issue lies. Once that's done, and I've eliminated the bad cell and or cells, I can replace them, wire the batteries back to 24 volts, have the charge controller detect at 24 volts, let the thousand plus watts of power in, and of course, I'm then going to have to rewire the solar panels back to 24 volts again. This is a lot of Mickey Mousing around, but this is kind of what you get when you're a complete noob and have no idea what you're doing, you know? That's why you can go pay a big professional company thousands upon thousands of dollars, or just kind of roll with the punches, I suppose, and learn what you can on your own. It really sucks to be down in certain circumstances, but that's, you know, kind of just par for the course. Um, you know, we were on 12-volt system trying to figure out how come our <laughs> batteries are only charging at 700 watts and the answer is staring us in the face in the manual you know um so yeah learning curve is steep on solar power my friends i hope you can watch some of my videos not make the mistakes i've made get ahead of the curve right so we're going to switch the solar panels to 24 volts which will then allow full thousand watts to the charge controller pushing the thousand watts to the battery bank array which will be also 24 volts hopefully we will be able to identify the bad cell and then we'll be on top of it the power will then be forwarded to a 24 volt inverter that is not going to be this one but rather a new fancy schmancy one that my incredible dad sent me thank you dad you really shouldn't have but i ain't gonna say no show you about that inverter in just a second all right here's part three of our attack isw 3000 that's the model number of this specific one it's giant compared to the other one that i have look at that thing Man. There it is. Thank you, Dad. Can't tell you enough how much it's going to mean to be back on solar power 100% of the time. Now to go through rewire the solar panels, and most importantly, find out what's up with our batteries, or this ain't even going to do anything. I'm excited to be back where we should be very soon. <laughs> it's a little heavy, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Vanna. Appreciate it. All right, so we're in the powerhouse here, getting this started. Here's a diagram. It goes like this. Here's the door. Here's the 10 batteries. They're numbered 1 through 10. Now, 
I'm going to have the numbers 1 through 10 down here and three values pre charge, under load, and after charge. Each battery number will have three numbers by it, and then that will tell us where the problem is. Currently, if we look at it, it's completely disconnected and shows nothing. under load. That reason, we have turned off the inverter inside the house so there is absolutely no draw. The battery array is reading at 12.4 volts, which should be okay. It's also showing that it is not charging at anything because we have killed the main breaker from the solar panels to the battery bank. It should now be safe to work on. The electrician has brought in her tools and is now disconnecting the positive pull from number one battery. We're going to go ahead and continue this on, take our numbers, and we'll get back later. Well, I don't know if you can hear me because we have the generator going to power the house so we can keep the refrigerator and all of our food alive. Here's the testing tool that we're using. And this is a load button, so here we go. Alright, it shows that it's slightly weak. Under load, it's near the bad. Alright. And then we repeat that. So here's the data. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, basically charge them individually and then see how that goes. Alright, so the plan is going to be now we need to rewire the system to be 24 volts. It is currently wired as 12. We are going to do so when we hook the batteries back up. We're also going to hook them up as 24 volts. We're going to install the brand new inverter we got and we should be back up. We'll see how fast we can get this done. It's about noon. Here we are under the solar panels. So I'm just reusing these that have been Off to make the panels 12 volts. Um, so it's connected, disconnect. Just put wires together, and I'm reusing this because these are a whole bunch of tapes before it's you. Does that mean that I don't have to go find where it is? Now that's recycling. <laughs> Aria likes it and thinks it's nice and comfy. Oh yeah, it's nice and cool under here. Really? Even though the solar panels are right above you? Well, the solar panels supposedly are absorbing most of the stuff that would be going through. Oh nice. It's converting it to energy. Oh gosh, I hope it charges over 600 watts. So, two brand new cables. And I put the negative on the negative and the positive on the positive. Ta-da! Done! Done? Yep! That was it! Okay, now we can go wire the batteries to 24 volts. Yep, and I would like to check to make sure that it's coming out at 24 volts and I didn't mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> ha! What? Never! Thirty-seven volts. That's what twenty-four should charge us or close to. Okay. Great. So this is good. I'm gonna leave it off until we fix all the batteries. Rewiring of the solar panel array successful to twenty-four volts. So we're back at the batteries. So the generator is right next to me and all the cables. So right now they are negative. Negative. And then the positives on the edges. 
I'm going to flip all of these so they are positive, negative, positive, negative, so I can wind these center ones in series and then the edges in parallel. So he went to go hit the switch for the solar panels. Let's see how long it takes him to get there. There we go. Going up in watch. Wow, it's already at seven, 700 watts. Did it blow up? Yep. And it's at 700 watts. Before it was like 300, 400. Yep. So I guess we're going to have to stick to 24 volts. I know I said that the 12 volt system charged at 700 watts max, but the max I've ever seen is barely under 500. So the fact that we're now getting above 7 is great. Um, it means that we're a huge step in a direction towards getting back on top of power.
right where we should be. So back in the generator house, I uninstalled the old inverter. I'm trying to install the new one right on the stud there on the left. Two of the slots will be installed there for all the weight. The other two will be installed just floating. Now hopefully the giant thing will be able to fit on the wall. It'll probably take up the whole board. Alright, so got the inverter installed. I installed two there just so it won't twist side to side. The other two on the left side are installed just in the stud to help hold the weight like I said before. Now the power is going to be coming up through the bottom from the batteries. It's going to be inverted coming through the top, going up and over into the junction box and connecting somewhere. I'll let the electrician deal with that. Good to go. Do it. Hit the on button. Just do it. <laughs> I don't hear an explosion. Yes. Guess I think all those lights are green. It's grounded, it has perfect sign, there's no faults, and it has battery power. Yes! Yeah! We did it! Alright, let's check out the numbers coming from the battery thing, see if it's... Alright, still charging at 600 watts, alright. That's the panels, that's the battery. Alright. Awesome. We are now back to 100% solar power, Bianca. Uh, I'm relaxing here in the nursery after a long day. About six hours or so took us to convert the solar panel from 12 back to 24, check all the voltage, convert all the batteries, everything like that. Not bad for an afternoon project. It's a great feeling. I appreciate my family helping out in this case. It was driving me insane. Uh, it's a very bad feeling to, you know, have solar independence and all of a sudden, bam, the whole system goes down catastrophically in different areas and not sure why, right? So us being super inexperienced, we just kind of start reaching at random different straws and research only gets you so far uh, when you're inexperienced. So. Dad, thank you very much. I really appreciate all your knowledge. Um, especially appreciate the inverter. Uh, yeah, here's hoping that all these things will last a very long time without any more additional changes from us. Uh, it's been a great afternoon. I feel very accomplished today. So I hope everyone else has a wonderful Tuesday. Week's going swell here. Have a good afternoon.